that the new iPhone? Yeah, got it on T-Mobile. Fastest iPhone deserves America's fastest LTE network. Introducing the amazing iPhone 8. It's the best iPhone yet, now on America's best unlimited network. For a limited time, save up to $300 on the amazing iPhone 8 after 24 monthly bill credits. And now join T-Mobile's iPhone upgrade program for free. Eligible trade-in and finance agreement required. If you cancel service, you may lose promo credits. Contact us for details. Video at 480p. Small fraction of users over 50 gigs per month may have reduced speed. See store for details. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Voices for Change 2.0, the only podcast that focuses on mental health while mixing in movies, music, books, sports, and pop culture. Here are your hosts, Rebecca and Joe Lombardo. Hey, good morning, everyone. We are glad that you are with us on this fine October morning. Yes, good morning. Welcome to Voices for Change 2.0. I would ask for you guys to be patient with me today as uh, I'm still getting over some bronchitis and sometimes there's uncontrollable coughing involved. I'm trying my best to stifle it. So, um, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Uh, Hang in there. So, um, anyway, uh, like I said, welcome. Uh, I know we've been off the last couple of weeks we've had some stuff going on yeah thanks for being patient with us while we've been uh well we Uh, we made a long journey yeah uh, (laughs) we did um beck was invited to be on uh i don't know if you want to talk about it or not yeah okay talk about for just a minute all right uh she was invited to be on talking live with dr robbie ludwig and uh so we drove to new york yeah, and we're in Michigan, if you didn't know. So, so it's a bit it, of a drive. It's kind of a drive, but yeah. um, it it was important to me to. I've always been a fan of Dr. Ludwig's, and it, when she invited me, I just knew I had to do it. So, yep. Um, so we we saved our our pennies and nickels and dimes, and uh, drove all the way out. And New York was awesome. Um, we were talking about going back maybe next year for a little vacation sometime. Save yeah, up. so when we can actually see some sights because yeah. we couldn't stay more than three days. So Yeah, it was just a, a whirlwind thing when you're driving like that. So, um, But it was a great experience. Dr. Ludwig was uh, just absolutely lovely, just a wonderful person to talk to, and uh, Beck did awesome on the show. Well, thank you. You did, baby. <laughs> and... Um, if you guys want to check it out at all uh, on Facebook, just type in Talking Live, and uh, Dr. Ludwig will come up and look for look for back on the show. And you may even see <clears throat> yours truly for a minute. Yeah, he pops up on there, too. He, he didn't want me to hog all the fame. <laughs> <laughs> well, i gotta, I got to keep her level head of the little. You know. All um, right, so today's guest for our show has joined us. <laughs> Uh, we are chatting with someone that is no stranger to the mental health community. She's an author, an advocate, and a host, and also a producer of her own podcast. So please welcome to our show, Lisa Davis, MPH. Hi, hello. Well, Lisa, hello. welcome. Hi, Thank you so you much. Doing? I'm good, nice. Joe. I have a cold, so I completely sympathize. With <laughs> I might cough now and then as well. <laughs> Okay, but yes. that's great. It's nice to meet you, and thank you very much for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. As long as neither of you gets me too sick, then uh, we're good. <laughs> It'll be okay. Exactly. I know my husband's like, stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more likely that I'll get her sick than you will, though. Just a, just Probably. A, just a hunch. I'm just being a smart ass. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right, okay, so you're, if, okay, if you're, you don't you're, you're my smartest. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you guys are if so you adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you don't have any questions for us, we're just going to jump right in. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Cool, great. Our first question for you is what does MPH stand for and what type of schooling did it take to acquire that title? 
Uh, an MPH is a master's in public health, and it's two years of graduate school. And uh, I focused on health uh, education and health media. There's also uh, epidemiology and uh, nutrition and some other, uh, I think, parent and child and uh, or mother and child. And it's it's pretty good. I like it a lot. It really looks at the overall health of, like, the society, the community. And for me, I really love being a health educator uh, in different settings and clinics and hospitals. Um, but then I found that using television and radio and podcasting is a really great way to reach a lot of people as well and to get the word out about how, how to live a healthy life. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. do you do – yeah. you, so you're, are you traveling around to different, like, hospitals and, and – that type of thing? Or? I used to. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I worked for a lot of nonprofits, and unfortunately those jobs mm-hmm. don't last very long because the funding's always cut because we still haven't gotten through our thick skulls. A lot of us have, but, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> higher ups, that prevention is the best way to go. So I worked yeah. as a sex educator. I worked as a hepatitis C educator. I worked as a diabetes educator, and they all got eventually got cut because of funding, um, which is so sad. And so yeah. I actually started my own business back in 2000 and what was it two uh, I was a health and lifestyle coach I'd go in people's homes I'd clean out their cupboards I'd teach them to cook I'd take them to the store I'd help them shop figure out balanced meals and what to eat uh, and then I had my daughter and then I was with her um, home for a long time and then back in 2009 she was born 2004 2009 I got into radio I had been doing television previously and uh, mm. I just love it because you can talk to people anywhere you know with the TV you're kind of like <laughs> okay who's in the area but with radio it's like holy right. cow I can talk to anybody anywhere it's awesome <laughs> you guys know that <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's nice, you know, being able to, to have nice. that kind of reach, you know. And and Definitely. when can we expect you to at our house to help with with all of that? Yeah, really. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, I'll come. <laughs> hey, we can do a whole show on that. I mean, really, I could help you, your <laughs> listeners live a healthier life, and you know, kind of talk about all the different diets out there and what I think really works for the majority of people. Cause everyone's different and we all have our own unique, unique things. You know, I always say my husband can like live on whole grains and feel great. I eat whole grains and I get tired. So, you know, it, we all have our individuality, but then there's certain uh, truths for everyone. Like, you know, lot, eating lots of healthy fat and, you know, uh, eating lots of plant-based foods, obviously, you know, <laughs> things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, did you personally or any member of your family struggle with any mental health concerns in your life while you were growing up? Yes. My grandmother had bipolar. I say had because she passed away. And Sorry. all I knew was whenever she was going to come, she was, she was kind of challenging. Um, I don't know if that was because of the bipolar or just her personality, but my mother had a very tense relationship with her. And when she would come to visit, my mother would freak out for like a good week and just look for everything she'd ever given her. Cause my grandmother had this thing where like, she'd give me a shirt when I was five and then she'd come and visit when I was 10 and she'd be like, do you still have that shirt with a hippo? Do you remember you had a pink bow? Like she remembered everything. And I'm like, Grammy, that wow. was five years ago. She's like, well, where is it? And so my mother would be like, where's that sweater? Oh my God. I'm like, mom, <sighs> you know, and it was just this really chaos. So for me, it was just like chaos. I didn't really know. I knew that Grammy, had uh, some health issues. I knew they were mental health issues. And what was nice is they, they they were sort of like, this is like my mom had physical health issues. So it's like, well, Grammy has mental health issues and your mom has physical health issues. But what I saw was a woman who was uh, very demanding, really stressed my mother out and wasn't very nice to her. So I didn't, again, as a kid, I wasn't like, oh, that's because she has a mental health disorder. I was just like, I don't know. I just don't like my Grammy, you know? <laughs> so, But it didn't, it didn't, color my judgment if, if you know what I mean I wasn't like begrudging I just thought she's a challenging person if that makes sense yeah 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 I, I get that I yeah. absolutely get that yeah my my grandmother um was she was brought up in a very uh, not aggressive household but just very stern and that mm. carried over and I think that's why my mom is the way she is with with me, you know, my my mom got the brunt of abuse growing up, and uh, you know, if, if you met her today, you'd think, wow, she's just very even tempered, and you know, tries to go with the flow on things. And I think that was always a direct response to how 
my grandmother was, you know, and I loved my grandmother dearly. You know, I, I, I do to this day and I miss her, but, um, you know, for a long time growing up, I, I had a very contentious relationship with her and she lived with us. So it was oh, wow. really tough and it sucked because we didn't actually start having a good relationship till I was about 17 and I grew up a little bit and got a better understanding of her. And then two years later, she moved out. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's funny how grandparents can have that effect, too, on, you know, your environment and your upbringing and, and what you go through. Oh, definitely. And it's interesting. I don't remember this, but my Grammy claims that when I was three or two, maybe I was two, I would say to her, I don't love you. I only love my mommy. I don't remember saying oh, that at all. It's like, geez. <laughs> um, but I, I, I might have. I don't know. Because I, I did I, – I didn't like the way, I mean, I had a difficult relationship with my mother, but I just didn't like, mm-hmm. I saw the way she treated her and I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I, maybe, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the, the first brunt of me dealing with my grandmother's wrath was, I was probably right around that age, maybe four and told my dad that my grandmother was old fashioned. And apparently my grandmother didn't appreciate hearing that from me. So that was kind of cracked me up. But, <laughs> Okay. Anyway, let's get Wasn't back she? To I mean, she's a grandmother. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. They're kind of supposed to be old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Exactly. All right, so talk to us a bit about the book you released, uh, Easy to Love but Hard to Live With. What inspired you to write that book? Well, what inspired me is it's so the full title, Easy to Love but Hard to Live with Real People, Invisible Disabilities, and True Stories. It's actually it's an anthology. It was edited by myself and this wonderful woman, Trisha Bliven Chazanoff. And what inspired me is I want I, my daughter has um, she's on the autism spectrum. She has AD, uh, ADD and dyslexia and something called NLD. I mean, I could go on and on all day. She has anxiety. I mean, there's a lot of different things. And so my mother also had a lot of these issues, but she never got diagnosed. I mean, she'd lie in her room for hours and hours a day when I was a kid, and she couldn't drive on the highway because everything was too fast. She couldn't cook with spices because everything was too strong. She had, like, this bionic nose, and it was just unbelievable, This, you know, her sensory issues. And so when my daughter was born and, and the wind would blow on her face and she would cry and she – We'd take her to the supermarket, and she'd be up for three days crying because she was so overstimulated. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she's just like my mother. Well, my mother died at 56 from ovarian cancer, never getting validated. Mm -hmm. And so I was seeing how it is for my daughter who got um, a sensory processing disorder diagnosis at two and a half, and then the autism spectrum at six, and then the ADD, and, you know, with the um, neuropsych evals and counseling. And now she's in a school for kids who um, are on the spectrum and have ADHD and ADD and dyslexia, et cetera. And like, wow, what a life she's going to have compared to my mother who just suffered. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, Diane, she just has to get over it. Why is she such a baby? Or what, 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 she's just hysterical, you know, the whole hysterical woman thing. So I, I wanted mm. to write a book for people who have issues and then for people who love them. So I, I wrote a story about what I just described, about having a mother with these types of issues and having a daughter. Um, And then there's people in the book, I wanted to look at mental health issues. So there's a woman who has depression. There's a woman who has agoraphobia. um, There's some other anxiety disorders. And then there's also learning uh, differences. That's what my daughter calls them versus disabilities. There's a great Q&A with Henry Winkler about growing up dyslexic and him not figuring it out until he was in his 30s when he had a kid who had dyslexia. And he's like, oh, I'm not stupid, you know, and coming to terms with that and the abuse of his parents calling him a dumb dog. And I mean, it was just terrible. Um, And it was really enlightening to see the way people deal with these things, struggle with these things, whether you have validation or not, if you have support in your life. And then also to see that it's hard on the people that, uh, that love them. You know, it was really hard with my mom, and it's really hard with my daughter. It doesn't mean there's not amazing things within that, because she's incredible, but it's a challenge. And so I wanted a book that kind of felt like a support group. You know, on the back of the book, it says, You Are Not Alone. And um, uh, there's a great uh, foreword uh, by Eustacia Cutler. That's Temple Grandin's mother. Um, Okay. Yeah, and there's a great blurb um, by Mayim Bialik. Uh, It's just, it's a really wonderful collection of stories. So I'm hoping it helps people feel less alone. I I really want to read that 
That sounds I figured like a that you would, fascinating actually. read. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Really I think do. you'd like it from what uh, Becca told me uh, about your guys' relationship. I thought, oh, you guys, I gotta, I, I'll, I'll definitely get you a copy. And I apologize I didn't get to, to you sooner. Um, so, <laughs> That's okay. But, thing. yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. And you know the other thing, too, which is nice, which I forgot to mention, is that in, there's also some – some of the essays have a Q and A afterwards with the experts saying like, okay, so this person, you know, had agoraphobia and what would you recommend for this? Or how do you deal with this anxiety? And then we ha- ask some questions or, you know, a uh, lot of good stuff like that. Or there's a, one of my mm-hmm. favorite essays is by um, Brian Leaf and he's really big into yoga and he talks about how he used yoga to help his ADD and his colitis. And uh, even though the book didn't really cover like physical ailments, he happened to have that as well. And he, even talks about some good yoga postures in the book for, you know, ADD and, and anxiety and hmm. things. So it's pretty cool. Is, it's it. so funny that you talk about the whole um, bionic nose thing, though, because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our my entire existence in my parents' home revolved around at least once a night, my mom <laughs> yelling out to the entire house, What's burning? <laughs> and all of, us would, all of us would just start yelling back, nothing. And oh, my was, gosh. Oh, my brothers was cooking something, but usually nothing was happening when she was yelling, what's burning? Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, and, my and sister that, would get stoned, and she would walk through this in high school in the 80s. She would come up through the hall, like, Really, I mean, my mom might not be home for like six hours, and she would be the only one. She's like, I smell pot. We're like, how does she smell? I don't understand. How <laughs> they didn't, you know, I mean, nobody else. She could smell everything. And, uh, boy, that caused a lot of problems. So that's a whole other issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, of course, I, I developed that, that same sense of strong wow. sense of smell. Yeah. And now here I am at. 44 when he's cooking in the in the kitchen and I'm upstairs yelling I, what's burning I'll, I'll, I'll get a te- I'll get a text while I'm cooking what are you burning <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like um how do you know that yeah oh it, gosh and, that's hysterical it, the things that he eats like if uh, he, everything smells like farts <laughs> Sounds like my house. <laughs> that, that's the, it doesn't matter what it is. If I'm, you know, it either smells like farts or. It smells like cat piss. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm eating anything. <laughs> you guys are so funny. You know, it's just, it's, if he opens a bag of chips next to me, I'm like, oh, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll, open, I'll open a bag of uh, kettle chips and it's, and it's just, oh, it smells like farts. Yeah, so, we're, we're terrible, yeah, terrible, it, it terrible people. Kills me, or or she'll talk, or she'll say to me, "You smell that?" I'm like, "No, he, he I rarely don't. smells anything. He's I, always stuffed up." Yeah, I don't have a great sense of smell to begin with. So you combine that with uh, super nose sitting next to me here, and it's <laughs> oh just boy, mass amounts of chaos, you know. And so she she can be sitting and smell something across the room, and I get I got to get right on top of it to figure out what the hell it is she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, my oh. husband has some sensory issues too, and so he and my daughter both have like the bionic nose. Apparently, my daughter tells me that I'm extraordinarily smelly. Now, I don't think I am, but I don't know. <laughs> it's just funny. She's very blunt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that'll that'll definitely knock your ego down a couple of notches. Yeah, <laughs> she's good you know. at that. <laughs> that what smells? It must be mom. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, um, oh, that do? said, I think we're going to take our first break. Okay. Uh, we're going to be listening to Blake McIver with Start to Believe. Staring down that long and winding road, I felt like I could never start again. Flipping through the pages of my broken life Just remembering when Before I was yours I just stumbled through my feeble lines But now you bring me All I could ask for you Give me all that I need And baby, you've gathered the pieces Maybe I'll start to believe Looking up that mountain top I said, how do we begin to climb? 
wishing I could speed right through to all the joy. Just manipulate time. But now I am yours, so I'll stop wandering through those feeble lies. Cause now you will bring me all I could ask for. Doubts close in, I know that you'll be there. I won't despair, my dream come true. Who knew? Baby, it's you. And though I falter, I lose control. Your soul pulls me through. Baby, it's you. You know just what to do. You bring me all I could ask for. Give me all that I need. I guess I'll start. 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 I guess I'll start to believe. I guess I'll start to believe. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Voices for Change 2.0. I'm Joe. This is Rebecca sitting next to me, and we have on the line Miss Lisa Davis, MPH. How's it going? <laughs> good, good, good. I'm having a blast with you guys. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that makes us happy to hear. Yeah, we like to hear that. Good. So, you mentioned that your daughter has some uh, health concerns. Um, how, how does your family cope with that and, and, and work with that and and everything? Well, you know, it's it's where I'm lucky because my father-in-law is really supportive. He comes over every single day, and uh, unfortunately, my mother-in-law passed away when she was four. She's 13 now, um, but she was supportive as well. Um, the extended family was on his side because I have no family around here. It's all his family. Um, was okay. a little tough at first because nobody really understood what was going on, and and I didn't like to take her to you know holidays and big social things because she would get so overwhelmed and she wouldn't sleep for days, but. When you saw her, she seemed fine. And then she wasn't one of those kids who has tantrums in front of people. Like she just would kind of shut down and then all the stimulation would enter her and then she would flip out for days. Mm. So it was sort of like people just thought I was being antisocial. And it's like, have you met me? I'm like one of the most social (laughs) people ever. There's something real. So it took us a long time to get any kind of validation from any, from people in our lives actually. Um, uh, other than his parents. And even that was a little hard at first, you know, with my mother-in-law. She kind of was like, well, why aren't you coming? And what's going on? And, you know, but it took her a while. And then she was getting on board, and then, unfortunately, she passed away. But my father-in-law has been great. Uh, but it's, it is a challenge, I mean, because there's um, very high-functioning autism, plus the ADD, plus the dyslexia, plus something called NLD, which is a really – confusing name. It's a uh, nonverbal learning disorder. These are kids who are incredibly verbal. Um, she was speaking in sentences before she was one. And if I used to say wow. that to people, they'd be like, oh, you're just bragging. I'm like, no, I'm not bragging. It's make, she, her mind won't shut off. I don't want to have in-depth conversations with my, you know, eight month old. I want her to go to sleep. Like I want her to be able to go to the grocery <laughs> store and not, you know, be overstimulated for days on end. It was, it was such an isolating, lonely experience. And um, that's the other reason why, by the way, I wrote the book or edited the book, Easy to Love, because there's a lot of people in there who feel isolated and feel like people don't understand them and that's where I felt for a really long time now she's 13 I mentioned earlier she's going to a school where other kids have similar profiles Uh, you know she has a good counselor she has a great psychiatrist she has friends Um, you know we still have our I mean there's still tantrums 
probably now maybe every other day, and they're not as long, but they're still okay. – it's, it's always a challenge, um, but it's a different type of challenge, but we're in a much better place. You know, so, uh, something, too, going back to the book is there's people in different places where there's some people who are, like, in the thick of it. Um, like, I could have used this book the first, like, three or four years of her life when I felt like no one understood. I never slept. I was depressed. I was, I'd lost mm. a bunch of weight. Um, I just looked and felt terrible. And uh, it was just, and then there's people who are now kind of more where I'm at. We're like, we're in the groove. We know what challenges there are and we have better coping mechanisms. And I think it gives people hope. Because if you had said to me when she was one, that someday I would have four podcasts and I have another book coming out. It has nothing to, it has to do with sex and food. (laughs) But anyway, um, next year, and that I would be having this fulfilling career and that my daughter would be, you know, being able to go outside without crying. I mean, you know, I thought, no. And so I think that's, you know, a hopeful thing as well. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and it is. It's, it's, I think that's one thing that people don't understand when it comes to mental health issues and especially the stigma is – you know, the, the isolation of it, you know, um, I, I think that's just something that people don't realize. It's like, you know, we're, we're not purposely being antisocial about a situation, regardless of what you have going on. Oh, um, sure. it's, it's, you know, it's you're too overwhelming. Yeah. You're just trying exactly. to do your best to, to cope and keep it together that day, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, you're you're trying to control. It's like trying to control a Google a, a gaggle of butterflies that are trying to all get away. You know, and, and you're trying to hold yes. everything in place, and and you can't. You know, and that's the the really challenging part that that people I, I think really don't understand. Oh, know? I completely agree. You're trying. It's like you're trying to control the uncontrollable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I mean, I look back on a lot of my decisions and I think I was over like I should have just taken her to the parties. I should have just done more because then we became so reclusive and that made me mm-hmm. more depressed. But I just I didn't know what to do. It's like, do you take her and then she doesn't sleep and then you're all miserable or do you just keep her life super quiet? So she will sleep. I, I kind of made it all about sleep. And now it's funny because sleep is, is so important to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I go to bed every night by nine at the latest. Because I know she's an early bird. She's going to be up at 5 or 5.30. And she goes to bed around 8 also. And we, you know, I go to bed. Well, I go to bed at 9, she's around 8. And people are like, oh, my God, you guys are so weird. You go to, I said, yeah, but you know what? I just know that we'll function better. And for years, there wasn't any sleep. So yeah. <laughs> excuse me for yeah, one. You... And that's a big health <laughs> thing, too, you know. Yeah. Like my brother will visit from Hawaii. I won't see him for five years. And I'll be like, it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to bed. You know, and people are like, I can't, you, you guys aren't going out. No. And he understands. Like he's been supportive, like, since day one. He totally gets okay. it, and um, it's so nice. He'll be like, okay, that's fine. We'll just catch up in the morning. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like cool. those kinds of accommodations are hard. I don't know if you guys have that in your life, but there's certain things that you, you have to stick to because you know if you don't, everything gets derailed. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one thing. You know, Beck and I have been together. Everybody knows this. We've been together 16 years now, and, you know, it was, you know, she had been dealing with, her, her mental health issues for about 10 years previous to that. And it was a, a learning curve for me, but you know, now it's a matter of, okay, well we can do this. We can't do that. You know, and you, and you learn how to navigate, you know, like, like if she's having a good day, excuse us. If you can hear that in the background where we apologize, apparently the hell's angels are outside on our front porch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear the motorcycle really, going by. Really, really loud motorcycles yeah. going by, so we don't know if you're picking that up. But yeah. anyway, go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's just for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were just stopping by to say hello. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's it's a learning curve. But you know, like I I know now when she's having a good day or when she's having a bad day, and I know if she's having a bad day that you know I got to treat things with kid gloves and try and be as as ginger as possible uh, with you know, anything I, I say and do for her, because the last thing I want to do is add on to what she's dealing with during the course of the day, you know, especially when, exactly. it, when it is a bad day, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's but it, it you're right, it takes a while, a few years to 
figure out and find your way with it, you know, and I think that's why, like, what you do is is great because you're helping to, it's a matter of, of taking what, what, what you've learned and taking what we've learned and passing it on to people that are just now being confronted with it, you know, um, when you're confronted with, with all those different things, you know, autism or bipolar disorder or anxiety or, or whatever, and you, you know, it's brand new and you don't know what to do and you're like trying to figure out who to talk to, what to do, what course of action to take. The fact that now we have this community that is putting their experiences out there and saying, hey, I've been through this. I know what you're going through. You're not alone. You know, this is what I did. Maybe this will work for you. Try it, you know. That wasn't in place for us 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's unlike any other thing that I've seen with illness. You know, I mean, yeah, there's a good, good community for cancer and for diabetes and, you know, all, all these different other physical maladies. You You have that. Yeah. But. I don't know. It just seems like the mental health community is a little bit more close knit to me. Yeah, and thank goodness. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, what kind of advice do you have for a family just starting out with, uh, you know, the similar types of issues like what what you guys go through? Honestly, I think you have to do what's best for your family, even if you're not getting outside approval. As hard as that is, because trust mm-hmm. me, I mean, my husband's my my in laws were not happy with us that we didn't come to Thanksgiving. Uh, his extended family wasn't happy with us that we didn't, you know, participate mm-hmm. in other things. Um, even no, my husband sometimes didn't understand, like, you know, what was going on. And I'm not saying not to listen to your husband, but in the end, because he would say, there, there's this running joke we have. At the time, I, it wasn't a joke. I wanted to, you know, I was just so, <laughs> so upset I wanted to kill him. But he would say, because, you know, you read all the baby books, and they say just pick two times for naps. And it mm-hmm. never worked. And I was like, everyone else's baby, it worked. I was like, this isn't working. And he'd say, just pick two times. And I was like, I, you've got to stop saying that because I'm so sad and nothing is, I mean, it was just hopeless. Nothing's working. I'm exhausted. And I, I would basically, she ended up just sleeping on top of me. And then you'll get books that say, don't let your baby sleep on top of you. Don't nurse your baby to sleep. You know what? If I didn't let her sleep on top of me or co-sleep, or let her nurse whenever the hell she wanted to, we would never sleep. So, like, you have to throw out no. the books because they don't apply. There's a great book. Oh, my gosh, I wish I remember her last name. Um, her name is Rita. I'm trying to think of it. But it was, like, what to expect when you get the unexpected or something like that. Because that I, – I hate that book with a passion, that what to expect when you're expecting. I, I literally yeah. – I want to throw it out the window. And I'm sure people have kids, whether it's autism, ADHD, uh, mental health issues, that you know, that might cause sleep issues like bi- bipolar or other things – it doesn't mm-hmm. apply to your kid, and it just makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. I kept feeling like, what am I doing wrong? What am I? And then finally, like, no, I knew there was something wrong with her, but nobody else would see it. Nobody else could understand. Um, so listen to yourself is my long-winded <laughs> I'm trying to get to, <laughs> giving you examples. And don't just pick two times. He said that to me the other day. We were talking about something. I'm like, oh, we have to deal with this situation, you know, with our girl. And he's like, well, just pick two times, and then we laugh. And I'm like, it, it took a long time for that to get funny. And let me tell you, it, yeah. it's been a long time, and it's still not completely funny <laughs> as I'm laughing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, you got to you got to see what works for you. And, um, you know, uh, I remember there was – I forgot who it was, but there was someone who was talking about that their partner wasn't on board with, like, taking – certain things out of the kid's diet, even though it made a huge difference. And when they went away, they would give the kid all the crap that they're not you know, supposed to have. And the kid would regress. And you're like, what are you doing? So you have to work it out with your partner to be on the same page. Yeah. And that's a bit, that's, that's hard. That's why I think there's, you know, a lot of couples split up. I want to say a lot, but it happens. I mean, my I'm husband and I just time. are amazing. I think that we're still, <laughs> we're still here in one piece <laughs> and we're still happy. <laughs> You know, oh, that's um, good. we have good communication, though. He got past saying just pick two times, thank goodness, <laughs> and uh, really saw that there was something going on. Because he, he had never been around babies, so he didn't know, but I had been. I started babysitting at a young age. I knew I'd been around a lot of babies, and I'm like, this isn't right. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't going well. Something is not right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> you know, that's and that's the thing is, you know, you, you, you knew enough to recognize, you know, yeah. which is which is key, you know, but yeah, like I, I was never around kids much growing up, you know, I've never been, 
you know, I love kids, don't get me wrong, but I've never been yeah. um, super comfortable around them, you know? Mm-hmm. And when Beck and I got together, you know, one of the early things we discussed was whether or not we were going to have kids, you know? And she was always very reticent about it because of of what she goes through, you know? And she's like, I don't want to take anything out on our children. I don't want to have to go off my medication to have a kid. I don't want to pass it on to uh, any kids that we have. So we had decided early on. Mention, I just don't have uh, the patience for children. I yeah. really, I really don't. I, I, I babysat early on too, and it when I, when I turned eighteen, I realized when I was, I was sitting for this one particular family every Saturday night, and I realized one night when I started to think like negative thoughts about this kid, like I'm just going to let this kid stay in his bed and scream and I'm just going to go and shut the door and turn the TV up and ignore him that I wasn't in the position to mentally to be taking care of anybody's children anymore. You know, I, yeah. I had to, I had to stop doing it. And even, as, even really young, I knew that children were not going to be in my future uh, before I was ever diagnosed with bipolar disorder and everything else. So I think you have to f- figure out a, a point where you're self-aware enough to know that this isn't the right thing for me to do in my life. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. You know, it's funny because yeah. when my husband and I got married, we neither one of us wanted kids. I had a crappy childhood. Yeah. I didn't want to have kids. Family wasn't like a pleasant thing to me. And uh, he really didn't either because he has a lot of hobbies and he's super creative and likes to write and draw and build guitars. And you know, I guess like, you know, so it was like, there's no time. And then when we were around 36, we were both like, well, and after I got a lot of therapy, I was like, actually, I do want one. I just want just one. And that's it. And then, boy, (laughs) our lives changed. uh, Because you never know what you're going to get, you know? (laughs) Yeah, no, that's for sure. So he builds guitars, you say? He used to. He used to. Yeah, he built Mm. uh, electric and acoustic guitars. Yeah, he's super creative. Mm. He writes horror fiction. He's very good. Ken Davis, people should look him up. Uh, I I, I will have to look him up because I've been playing guitar for over 30 years. Oh, cool. He he actually teaches now, too. I uh, I used to play in bands. Yep, my last band split up back in 2011, and uh, ever since then I've been teaching. So um, that's what I'll be doing all day tomorrow, in fact. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I still nice. have to learn. I I must be a, a baby or something because every time I try, it hurts your fingers at first, right? You got to get yeah, the it's, yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah, you you. The idea is you want to eventually build up calluses on your fingertips, you know. Yeah. And that that entails a lot of playing and you know. It, the uh, guitars are too big for me. I feel like <laughs> feel like it's gigantic. <laughs> like and I can't. <laughs> I get my fingers in the right spots. And yeah, she doesn't listen to me when I try and teach her what's going on. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's the way, right? Okay, honey. We can only have one guitar hero in the family anyway. <laughs> but on that note, we, we've got to take our uh, last break. Okay. So we will be back on the other side. Here is James Cobb, So Right.
Hey, welcome back to Voices for Change 2.0. We are glad to have you with us today. That was James Cobb with So Right. And we have in with us today on the show uh, Lisa Davis. Lisa, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm having a blast with you guys. It's super fun. Ah, thanks. Thank you. That makes us but, feel warm and fuzzy. Yes, we like <laughs> to hear that. So when we last spoke, uh, you and I, you mentioned that you have another book in the works. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm really excited. It's uh, coming out uh, with Skyhorse Publishing uh, next spring, 2018. It sounds so crazy, 2018. Yeah, it uh, does. And it is uh, about how uh, basically taking care of yourself, eating the right foods and exercise and stress management and other things can help with your sexual health. So it's basically about sexual mm-hmm. health. There's 50 recipes that we created by Erin McDonald. She's a registered dietitian, and she is the dietitian nutritionist for clean eating magazine and Ooh. i work with clean eating uh because i do a podcast for a media they do clean eating vegetarian times yoga journal muscle and performance and a bunch of others um wow. so we met through that yeah that's uh, the talk healthy today podcast and i have an interest in uh healthy living and sex and so i thought <laughs> i would bring those two things together and it's pretty exciting it's it's what i like about it is it's it's written in a very fun, conversational way. It has a great tone to it. It's humorous. Um, but it also gives you some really good hands-on tips. And there's, you know, part of the book is interviews with, there's a lot of interviews with a lot of experts. There's interviews with sexologists, nutritionists, um, MDs, uh, psychologists. And then there's, you know, lots of great recipes and information on connecting and connecting to your partner, connecting to yourself, figuring out what you like in bed, what they like, how to talk about it. It's it's a really nice mix, and there's really nothing else out there like that. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, that sounds yeah. really interesting. Yeah, you know? and and I'm really the cook fun. of the family, so I I wouldn't oh, mind nice. checking out some of the some of the recipes. Yeah, because I need to get better, and we need to stop eating out so much. I know so. it gets so expensive, not just health wise, but uh, on your it's hard on your pocketbook. I, I am so guilty of going to the Whole Foods and just being like, oh, that looks good, what they made. <laughs> I know I can yeah. make it myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, they're, I love they're, Whole Foods. Yeah, their yeah, uh, tuna salad is to die for. Um, shout out to Whole Foods. But yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's hard when you have, when you have we each have di- differing um, issues with food. With he's diet. He's yeah. uh, type 2 diabetic diabetes oh, okay. I, have, I have a gluten allergy mm. which make me violently ill if i have oh, no too much of it i've gotten yeah. to the point where i can have a little bit of it like maybe a bagel you know one morning but if i i, I always have a threshold mm-hmm. where you know we might be getting lazy because we've got too much going on so we're eating out a little bit more and the gluten might factor in more often, and it seems like I always hit this roadblock where my body's like, okay, that's enough, yep. and now you're mm-hmm. violently ill for a week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, you know. you know, I have food sensitivities, and I have what I call my tipping point where I'll I'll be okay, and then I'll eat a little of this, well, oh, just a little here and there, and then I'll be like one morning, I'll, I'll have like the worst food hangover, and I can like barely lift my head. I'm like, oh, that last yeah. corn chip really did me in or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> Damn you, Fritos! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I get it. You know, so so yeah, being able, you know, and food is such a difficult thing, you know, and and I know people are laughing hearing that, but you know, if you really have difficult. to, if you really have to figure out, like I don't, I don't understand how families these days do it. You know, it's hard enough feeding her and me, and it is tough to have, for a kid. yeah, you know, and and. I just remember when we were kids, we all sat around the table, we all ate the same damn thing, and yeah. we liked it. You know, we didn't complain about it. There was it. no battle. You know, exactly. <laughs> it was never it was never a struggle when we were kids growing up to, to figure out, you know, oh, mom's making meatloaf tonight. Oh, great. Okay, we're going to have that and mashed potatoes. Uh, I yeah. go for some meatloaf. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, you know, nowadays it's like, well, what are we having? Oh, I don't know. What do you want? Well, I don't know. What do you want? Well, I don't know. Well, no, we can't have that. Bell. We can't have that because that has this, and yeah. this will make you feel this way. And Yeah, this will this will make your head swim for a week, and this will uh, make Well, you, you guys will uh, love the recipes in this book because they're all gluten-free, 
Uh, they're mostly uh, – there's a lot of good – I mean, there's some, like some chicken, some fish, but there's a lot of good uh, just plant-based meals in there as well. Um, I am a fan of grass-fed organic beef, so I do like that. I think there might be one mm. recipe like that in the book. Yeah, that's um, good stuff. Lots of healthy fats. Um, we recommend avocado oil, and it's good. There's some really good stuff in there that I think would work for both of your uh, situations. Yeah, I'd definitely like to check that out. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm Although all... it seems like eons away. Yeah. <laughs> I know, doesn't it? But yeah. I swear, when we yeah. first spoke, Becca, and we scheduled this interview, I think it was in the summer, and I was like, wow, uh-huh. October. God, that seems so far away. Yep. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, here it is. Isn't yeah, it crazy? Probably. I know. I'm yeah. I'm scheduling now, and I think you are too, like for December and January, and that just seems mm-hmm. crazy. Like I, I don't want that to happen because that means it's going to be freezing, <laughs> right, yeah. for you guys you know, too. <laughs> yeah. For, Can we just stay in October? <laughs> I would love to stay in October perpetually because it's like uh, the perfect weather. And except the, it's the not right now, though. No, it's not. It's like hell we're outside. We're still, we're still in, in oh, the 70s hot? and 80s. Yeah. And humid. Oh. We were like that last week, and now it's finally like low 70s, which is my favorite. Upper 60s, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, it, just just cool enough for me to have to wear jeans, but not so cold that I have to bust out a Carhartt. You know, yeah. I, I'm I'm good with that. If I can walk around in jeans and a t-shirt and be comfortable, then I'm I'm good with that. So, totally. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your podcast and where people can tune in. Oh, great. So as I mentioned, so I'm doing uh, three podcasts, well, two podcasts now, but there's two. Okay, so here it is. So Talk Healthy Today, see my cold. I'm like, where am I? What's happening? Okay, so Talk Healthy Today um, has, it airs every Tuesday and Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeart, um, and a bunch of other places. If you go to It's Your Health, with lisadavis.com very easy it's your health with lisadavis.com you'll see the graphic for talk healthy today it's right there you just click on it um, every tuesday is a health and wellness uh podcast we cover mental health sexual health physical health every aspect of health friday is always foodie friday and i love foodie friday we've got great chefs <laughs> and authors of cookbooks and we talk recipes and it's really fun um, and then I have another show that I just started with A Media uh, called Talk Fitness Today, and uh, that just that's all fitness. And then I do another show I've done for a long time called Naturally Savvy Radio. Andrea Donsky is a creator of this fantastic website, NaturallySavvy.com, and that's like green, organic, healthy living. Um, hmm. That you can also go and listen to if you go to it's your health with Lisa Davis dot com. And then I started all this with a show back in 2009 called It's Your Health. And It's Your Health covers every aspect of health. That is on terrestrial radio. That's on two NPR stations in Texas and then four stations in the Midwest. Um, wow. And yeah, and so I still do It's Your Health. And uh, that one is, again, all health topics. So it's a lot. <laughs> and then I yeah. got my girl and two dogs and yeah there's a lot going on so and a husband and <laughs> yeah, yeah it, and so really you have two kids but um yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes i tell him i'm gonna i'm gonna run off with mr baby that's my pit bull he's like the sweetest dog in the world i mean i'm just in this dog is such an angel and oh. so i'll say i'm sorry i can't take mr baby and i are running off he's like that's fine just take benji with you that's my other dog <laughs> <laughs> no we, we uh, we're not going anywhere benji, benji is a lab Aw. Yeah. Uh, a couple of my favorite breeds. We too. Yeah, the too, pit uh, gets such a bad rap. It makes me so upset because yeah. he, all he wants to do is lick you and cuddle you. Yeah. And he just yeah. follows you around. And I posted a pic today on my Twitter of him. Like, it's hard to type because he'll put his head kind of on the laptop and on my hand. He has a heavy <laughs> head, and I'm trying to type. Yeah. But he's just so adorable. <laughs> Aw. Just yeah, pit, so, yeah, pits are, are great dogs, and they really they, are. They, they get such a bad rap, and uh, every pit that I've ever met, I've just loved. They're just yeah. they're so sweet and so lovable, and they just all they want to do. You're right. All they want to do is cuddle. Yeah, you know? that's it. They're just big babies, and I call Mister Baby because when he wants to go out, he cries by the door, and he wants to come in, he cries. He's just Aww. amazing. Oh, and I also just started. I I have another podcast that I'm co-hosting with a friend. It's his podcast, but I join him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, called Just Ask David, and it's a, it's a beauty show. Uh, lots mm. of different beauty advice, hair, and uh, we focus a lot on natural beauty products and natural skin care, and it's pretty fun. So, yeah, there's another thing. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. So I like it all. Mental health, beauty, sex, 
pit bulls, you know, bring it all on. <laughs> wow, what a combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what about social media? How can people find you online? Yes, I hope they will. So Twitter I'm most active on. It's uh, I need to – maybe one of you can teach me. Anybody out there who knows how to change my Twitter name, because I should just have it at Lisa Davis, so it's easy. But I have it um, at healthmediagal1, so healthmediagal1, probably the only person who uses the word gal. Um, and then I'm, uh, I'm on Facebook, Lisa Davis. Uh, I'm on Instagram – at It's Your Health with Lisa Davis. And you can get the book uh, Easy to Love but Hard to Live With, which I'm honestly, it is such a heartwarming and moving book. It's really great um, on Amazon. I really okay. love it. Yeah, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it really, have, yeah. It really does. I, Take I, a look at that. I'm really good. looking forward to reading that. Oh, good. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've had people read it who, who don't have don't really have any of this in their life, but they still mm-hmm. loved it. They were like, "What?" Because it's such a good education. It's like, "Wow, I had no idea you're right. going through this," or "Wow, now I'm more sympathetic when I hear about these things." It's you know, it's about awareness and getting rid of that stigma, which is so important. Exactly, you know, and, and that's the, that's the thing. That's the same thing with with Beck's book. You know, it's it's yeah. What you know, it's this is what's out there. This is what you know we've been through and you know, your experience might be similar. This is how I handled this situation or it's more of a, a cautionary tale yeah. really just, you know, me advising people not to follow along in my footsteps, which, you know, you never know, you never know what's going to work for the next person, you know? It, mm-hmm. And that's why sometimes I, I kind of, shy away from people giving me personal advice, you know, on things like migraines or my depression or, you know, try this supplement or, you know, what have you, because, because sometimes people don't understand that it's not what worked for you may not work for me. So um, that's really what I was trying to say with the title of my book. It's not your journey because I'm just trying to tell people that, these situations do exist and these are the poor choices I made at the time to ha- as to how to cope with them. Now here's an option for you to take a better path. Oh yeah. So that's kind of how I was, where I was headed with my story. <laughs> oh, I like yep. that. Well, well you got to come on my show and talk about it. Oh, I'd love to. Either it's your health. Well, we can do both. It's your health and uh, talk healthy today. Now, do you do it over the phone like we do? I do. Skype? I have a assist- I have a studio at, in my home, so yeah, you can call in. And I can't take callers, unfortunately, but uh, but yeah, I have a, a nice setup here. Oh, okay, great, Very cool. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll have to talk about that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we have run out of time for now. Uh, unfortunately, we've really enjoyed talking to you. Yes, yeah, I've had so absolutely. much fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. We do appreciate it, Lisa. And uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna track you down to online and reach out and you know, pump you for whatever information I get about <laughs> eating healthy and recipes. Oh, and, totally. Yes, yeah, please do. All that. We invested in a in a juicer this last year, so it's a juice tiger. <laughs> nice. Just keep so, it green. Yeah. That's the advice. People tend <laughs> yeah. to use too much sweet fruit, and then that's just going to screw up your blood sugar and your, yeah, all that. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm yes. good at screwing green, up my green, blood sugar green. on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the green stuff that Whole Food sells, but that's a whole other thing. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they've got enough free advertising from us already. Yeah. So. Exactly. So we are out of here for this lovely Saturday. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Stay on the line. And, folks, you'll be listening to Kenneth Mogan, Real Me. I live my life in the shadows, always trying to hide.
Join us next week as Rebecca and Joe continue to battle the stigma of mental illness. Follow us on Twitter at Voices for Change RJ and on Facebook at Voices for Change 2.0.